Hey everyone, my name is Allie and welcome to my channel. So today I am super excited to talk about my favorite books that I read in 2019. So 2019 was such a good reading year and I did end up reading 76 books this year, which is almost like I think 10 books up from last year and around 20 books up from the year before that. So I've really gone up in like my ability to read that many books in a year, I guess. Back in 2017, it was a really big goal for me to be able to read 50 books that year because in years prior, I hadn't even completed like a 10 book challenge. So I had so many books to read and I wanted to read them all. So I figured 50 was a pretty reasonable goal. And I can't believe I almost got to 80 books in 2019. And I'm hoping that in 2020, I get to 80 books. That would be so cool to just like keep going up in like 10 book increments. But I don't know, we're hoping. I set it at 50 just to be safe. So, because I know I can get to 50. 50 is a pretty, you know, it's a good goal to get to and it's really easy for me. So I figured, might as well set it a little low. But this year I totally just blew my expectations out of the water. I actually started off this year with a 20 book challenge and then I really blew past that in like February. So that just happened and I am really proud of myself. So out of those 76 books, I chose 10 of them to be my favorites of the year, and I will just go ahead and start with the list. Okay, so these are in no particular order, but the first one that I'm going to talk about is The Seven or Eight Deaths of Stella Fortuna by Juliette Grames. So maybe this is probably my favorite book of the year. I feel like ever since I've read it, that's all I've talked about. Like whenever anyone's like, recommend me a book, I'm always The Seven or Eight Deaths of Stella Fortuna. <laughs> I wasn't really expecting to love this book as much as I did going into it. I remember I found it at Target and I thought the cover was really pretty. So I decided to take a picture of it and I kind of forgot about it for a while and then I ended up getting my library card again and I downloaded Hoopla and they had it there and I'm like this is the book that I saw at Target I really want to read it it's historical fiction and I really want to read more historical fiction so I picked it up and I ended up really really loving it I just fell in love it completely broke me and destroyed me and I loved it it was so beautifully written and the narration was so good and the story was amazing the characters were amazing and it was just absolutely gorgeous. Basically it follows the birth, the life, and the death of Stella Fortuna and she is an immigrant from Italy and she moves from Italy to America with her family when she's about 19 years old and things really start to change for her and she goes through a lot of stuff and I definitely want to like give some trigger warnings for sexual assault and rape and stuff like that because there's quite a bit of it. And also a trigger warning for child molestation. I feel like those are super important trigger warnings to be aware of because I wasn't aware of them when I went into this book and they were definitely some pretty big surprises for me. Um, they're, not, they're not things that personally trigger me, but I can see how they would trigger some other people because they're kind of, they're not necessarily super graphic, but they're there and they're very present. So I would definitely be aware of that before going into this book but it is such a beautifully told story. And I love how the title really does represent the story. Like it is really about the seven or eight deaths of the main character, Stella. And it's just so beautifully woven in and gorgeously written. And I think it's a really interesting look at the Italian American immigrant experience. And also I haven't really read very many books about Italian culture. So that was also very interesting as well. The next book I want to talk about is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon, and I loved that book so much. I read it in one sitting and I cried so hard. It's a pretty popular book, so I'm pretty sure most of you know what it's about, but basically it's about this main character and she is having to fight for her family's right to stay in America. And she also meets this boy who is trying to decide whether to follow what his family wants him to do or to follow his own dreams. And I really love the way that their stories intertwine with one another. And I also really love the fact that the narrative isn't necessarily 
just focusing on the two main characters. It also kind of meanders to other different perspectives and different stories and I just absolutely loved the way that this was written. It was so beautiful, so heartbreaking and moving and I feel like if you want to read a book that's really going to make you cry it's going to be this one. It is so good and the audiobook is really amazing as well. The next book I really loved in 2019 was Pride by E.B. Savoy and I read this book back in February and it's still definitely stuck with me. I've actually never read Pride and Prejudice ever in my life. However, I love retellings and reimaginings of that story. I will literally watch any of the movies or any of the adaptions or whatever. I love the story so much and I feel like it really, really works in sort of a more New York modern setting. Also, this has Afro-Latinx representation, which I really enjoyed and I thought was so beautifully done. And it's so refreshing to get to read from different perspectives, especially within the Latinx community. If you haven't read this book, please read it. It is so, so good. I was literally finishing this book while I was walking around a sporting goods store with my family and it was just amazing. It was so, so good. The next book is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman and I cannot believe I put off this book for so long. Kat from Paperback Dreams is just absolutely correct when she says that this is like her favorite book, one of the best books ever. It's so good. I cannot believe I put it off for so long. Seriously, it's so good. The chapters are so short and it made this book fly by so fast. It's really thick so you would think that it would just take you forever to read it but no, the chapters are short. They're literally like one or two, maybe even three page chapters. And they're just so beautiful. I love this book. It's so good. If you haven't read it, like this is the one book that you absolutely need to read. And basically it's about this girl named Frances and she is super, super obsessed with this podcast and she doesn't know who the podcaster is. No one really knows. They've remained anonymous, but then one day she finds out who that podcaster is and they become friends and things ensue. And it's not like a super strong plot. It's very character driven, but it's beautifully done. The characters are so fleshed out and realistic. And I think that this is just one of the best contemporary books that you could find out there. It's one of the best YA books. It's just so good. And Alice Oseman really knew what she was doing when she wrote this book. It is so, so good. The next book is one that you've seen me recommend a couple of times, and that is Vasa in the Night by Sarah Porter. And I loved this book so much. I read it for the booktube games back in like February and it was so amazing and so spooky. So if you're looking for a more spooky book on this list, I don't really read very many of them, but this one is going to be a good one. It definitely reminds me a lot of The Twilight Zone and I love that show. It's one of my favorites. So reading a book that was very reminiscent of that show was so much fun for me. It was very surreal and spooky. And I actually like whenever I would put down the book to go maybe to the bathroom or to get a drink of water or something like that, I would be so scared to walk down the dark hallway in my house. And that's when you know that a book is really spooky and really good is when you're like actually afraid to walk around your own house. It was so, so good. It's kind of difficult to explain because it is very surreal, but it's basically a retelling of Vasilisa the Beautiful, which is a Russian fairy tale. And it's similar to Cinderella in a way. So think of like Cinderella, but really spooky and set in like a fantastical New York setting. It's really, really good. So difficult to explain, really hard to pitch, but Twilight Zone asks Cinderella in a fantasy modern day Brooklyn, New York. Actually, I don't even know if it's Brooklyn. It is Brooklyn, the kingdom of Brooklyn. So I got it correct. The next book is one I actually did an entire video on and that is Crier's War by Nina Varela. And I love this book so, so much. You definitely heard a lot of my thoughts in that video. So I won't go too far into depth with this one. I'll leave the link down below. But I loved Crier's War so much. There's cyborgs, it's fantasy, it's a little bit of sci-fi. There is sapphic representation, which is so amazing. I'm pretty sure that one, if not both, of the main characters are people of color. 
and I just love this book so much. It really made me super happy to see a well fleshed out kind of enemies to lovers story and have it be sapphic and have it be fantasy and have it be a little bit of sci-fi. It was just so much fun. And basically it's about this world where cyborgs and humans have been kind of warring against each other and the humans used to be on top but now it's the cyborgs and things are not going super well so one of the characters is a cyborg the other is not and it is just beautiful it's amazing if you've heard anything good about this book it's all true it's seriously all true please read it the next book is i think one of my favorite fantasy finds of this year and that is the queen's rising by rebecca ross i loved this book so much. What's really cool about this book is that a lot of the first half deals with the main character being in this school where she and a couple other girls are being taught like one specific talent per student. So basically in this world when you're about eight years old you go to the school and you start to learn a talent and then you graduate when you're about like 18 years old and you have that talent and then you can go work for someone where you can put that talent to good use. So the main character doesn't really know what she's super good at. So she kind of like bounces around from different talents. She ends up settling on the talent of knowledge and it's just so cool. It's kind of like almost like Hogwarts houses in a way. Like there's a uh, talent of knowledge, there is acting, there is painting or art, I guess. There's music, stuff like that all these different little talents. And also something I really enjoyed about this book is that it's not super romance heavy. There is a bit of a romance, but it's not at all like the central plot of this book. It's definitely more focused on the world building and the politics and stuff like that, which I really, really enjoy in my fantasy. So if you're not super into political intrigue, you might not enjoy this book as much but I really loved it and I really enjoyed getting to read a fantasy book that didn't revolve around romance. As much as I love romance, I love romance, but I just really wanted something that wasn't super tied around like a relationship and I loved it. It was just absolutely amazing and such a breath of fresh air. The next book is also fantasy and that is A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kamerer and I loved this book so much. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling and it did it so well. I've tried to read other Beauty and the Beast retellings. They have not worked out for me, but this one really, really did it. Also, this book has cerebral palsy representation, and from the people around Twitter and Goodreads that have cerebral palsy, it seems like pretty good representation, which is really reassuring and makes me feel a little bit better about recommending this book because I loved it so much. It was so beautifully written, especially for an author who is more used to writing contemporary. I felt like she did such a good job at writing fantasy. It just worked so well. I loved the characters. I really enjoyed the world building and kind of the mixture of this sort of urban fantasy and just typical fantasy. And I think it was a really interesting reimagining of the classic tale of Beauty and the Beast. Like it definitely flipped some of the tropes on their head and I just I loved it. It was so good. I can't recommend this book enough. And I actually have the sequel as an arc, so I need to get to that soon. But I'm just really nervous, and I know that the sequel comes out soon, sometime in 2020. So I don't know, I'm just nervous, but I really love this first book, and I cannot wait to get to the second one. The next one is one I feel like some people either really loved or really didn't love, and that is Again But Better by Christine Riccio. And oh my gosh, I love this book so much. I cannot stop gushing about it. It is definitely just one of the best books of the year for me. And I know that's like a little weird because a lot of people really didn't like this book, but this one really, really worked for me. So basically this follows Shane and she decides to go abroad for a semester of college and she meets a lot of people when she's abroad and she kind of starts to form these relationships and it's just so good and there's a bit of a twist in the middle of the book which I like wasn't expecting for some reason and it was just amazing it really did it for me it made me so happy like every single page of this book just made me ecstatic to read the next one 
And I remember I was reading this book in a Starbucks and it was raining and it was so beautiful and aesthetic. And then I had to stop reading it because I had to go somewhere. And I closed the book, I walk out of Starbucks and I, as I'm crossing the street, I'm just like reveling in how happy I am reading this book. It was just such an interesting reading experience and I loved it. It was so much fun and it was so cool to like read a book where I could really enjoy it and not take it like super seriously. And I just loved it. It was so good. It's my baby. I also painted the edges of the book uh, this really beautiful blue color to match the cover and I think it turned out so pretty it's just so gorgeous. I feel like if I was going to reread any book in this stack of books it would definitely be this one. This one is just it's so cute it's so good it's so much fun I loved it. And the very last book that I'm going to talk about my one of my ultimate favorites of this year definitely maybe number two I want to say like Stella Fortuna and then this book right below it and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love this book so much. This book was an entire mood. It was so good. Last semester I took a rock history class and this book came out in like my last semester and it just fit perfectly for the aesthetic. It fit perfectly for the mood I was in and it was just absolutely fantastic. I loved it. And I love the way that it was written in kind of a documentary format because I love watching documentaries about rock bands and it just, it was so good. The writing was beautiful. The characters were amazing and felt so realistic. And I am just so excited to see this book adapted for TV because we're finally going to get to hear the songs that like are written in this book because this one has different song lyrics sprinkled out. And I think that also in the back, there are some lyrics as well, which is so cool. As you can see, just like a bunch of lyrics to songs that are written in this book. And it's just so good. I also painted the edges of this one in orange to match the orange on the spine. And oh, it's just so gorgeous. I loved it. And Daisy Jones is a whole mood with her just really cute like outfits and her hoop earrings and she's just so cool. I love her and I want to be Daisy Jones when I grow up. She's just so cool. Anyway, I don't know. It's just such a fun story to hear about, you know, Daisy as her own artist coming together with the band The Six and creating this like mega band, almost like a Fleetwood Mac. So it's definitely very reminiscent of Fleetwood Mac's history. And it's just so good. I loved it. It's just so amazing. So if you want to read this book physically and you want a little bit of a soundtrack to listen to while you read, I 100% recommend the album Girl by Maren Morris. It's perfect, it's perfect. I haven't listened to the audiobook, but I know that a lot of people really love it. So I don't know if I can personally recommend it, but I know a lot of people liked it. All right, so those were the 10 books that I loved this year in 2019. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please down below let me know some of the books that you really liked in 2019. I definitely want to hear some of those, especially since I feel like I can get some recommendations if you tell me what you really liked. This ended up being a really, really good reading year for me and I cannot wait to see what 2020 has in store for me and for the rest of us as well. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also go ahead and follow me on Twitter, Goodreads, and Instagram, and I will see you all in my next video. Also, Happy New Year and Happy 2020. Bye!